Eleven five is the last section that we're going to do. So let's pay attention. And we're doing an area again. This whole chapter has been about area. So of course we're going to do area again. But we're going to do area of similar polygons. Similar polygons. All right, if you remember what similar polygons are, let's start with a real easy one. Let's start with just a rectangle. We had a whole chapter about similar figures. Do you remember that? Scale factor, proportion, ratio. Do you remember all those words? Yeah. Okay, we had a whole entire chapter on that kind of stuff. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy and paste this. Now, right now, I mean, technically they are similar, but they're also what? They're exactly the same. If I took this, put it right on top of this, what do we call those if they're dead on exactly the same? Congruent. Congruent. Okay, we had chapters and chapters of things that were congruent. All right, so they're not identical. They're congruent. So look, these these would still be considered similar, but we don't, if they're exactly the same, if the corresponding sides are equal and the corresponding angles are equal, we, um, we say that they are congruent. But if the corresponding sides are not the same, but in proportion, now look what I did. I actually hit the shift key. Let's pay attention, please, ladies. Thank you. What I did is I hit the shift key right here, and what that does, it keeps everything in proportion. It keeps the sides uh, having the same and exact ratio. Uh, people do this all the time when they do desktop publishing. We probably talked about this before, and it's just this is my little pet peeve when, especially students, do this. I don't know, you'll have some kind of report, you'll put pictures in it, right? And you'll take a picture that is this shape, all right? It's taken like this, and then you'll say, oh, let's make it like this. And then what happens? Everybody gets all squished and stuff, but it fits your spot, but it looks ridiculous, okay? It's not in proportion. It's not to scale. So in order to keep things to scale, what you do is you hit the corner of your picture, you hit the shift key, and this works almost every program, almost... it. it probably doesn't even matter which program that you're using, which uh, publisher and all that kind of stuff. Almost any program you use, if you hit the shift key, it makes that in proportion. You see, I, look, I, I'm moving this mouse like way down here like this, but look what it's doing. It's keeping everything in proportion. Would you agree? If I don't hit the shift key and I take this and I move it down, see what it does? It changes the proportion of it, doesn't it? All right. So anyway, that's just a little benefit to you as far as learning, uh, you know, learning stuff on these programs that you use to do, do pictures and stuff like this. So they are they are similar to each other. What's the what's the little symbol that we use for similar? The little squiggly, right? Yeah, the little squiggly. So this is similar to this. Now every one of these problems that I'm going to give you, they're all similar. They're not all going to be rectangles. They could be triangles. They could be quadrilaterals like this. Uh, they could be pentagons. They could be all kinds of different polygons. But they all will be similar to each other. You don't have to go through this you know all kinds of stuff to figure out um, missing sides because they're similar you're gonna use one formula that I'm gonna give you here in a minute and you're basically gonna do the same thing to every single one of these no matter if it's three sides four sides five sides six sides no matter what okay so what I'm gonna do is label this let's just call this ABCD right so that's quadrilateral or polygon ABCD and I'll call this ABCD E F <coughs> G and H. All right. So this is what I'm gonna. That's what I'm calling that. Now I'm gonna show you what the formula is. We're not gonna go through any explanation on how to get the formula. I'm just gonna show you what the formula is, show you how to use it, and then you can start working on the worksheet. It's good. It's actually pretty simple. What it is is a. Uh, it's a proportion. So you have something over something equals something over something. Everybody got that? So we have two fractions, two ratios set equal to each other. That's a proportion. That's what we call a proportion. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, and they'll tell you these numbers. Okay, they'll give you some numbers here. I'll call this A for A1. What do you think the A stands for? What do you think the A stands for? It's the area. Okay, so it's the area. This stands for the area of the first uh, rectangle or polygon, whatever it is. And what do you think I'm going to call this one? A2. A2. All right. So I'll call this A1, A2. They don't even do this in the book. I just do this. I think it's easy to, to kind of understand. So what we're going to do is actually in the, in the book they do this. They say the area of ABCD 
and then they compare it to the area of EFGH. If you wanted to write that out, you could. If you go back and look in the book, that's how they're going to write it. As far as I'm concerned, let's just write this kind of easy. So let's call this A1. I'm going to compare the areas to each other. So this is going to be A1. What do you think is going to be down here? A2. So what I'm doing is I'm comparing one area to the other area. That's all I do. Now what does that equal? Well, it equals the corresponding sides compared to each other. So if I took this right here, um, we'll just call it AB. Now, I'm not going to compare it to like FG because AB and FG aren't corresponding, are they? No, they're not. So what is corresponding over here to AB? Yeah. EF. So I'm going to compare it to EF. But that's not quite the formula. You can't stop right there. There's one thing a little extra that you got to put on here. The side, when I compare one side to the other, right? I'm comparing this side to this side. Everybody see that? When I compare the sides, what I have to do is I have to square the sides. Now, I went through a little bit of an explanation in the last class, in my uh, fourth period class, on why that's true. If you're really concerned about it and you want to look at that, feel free to go on the YouTube video and, and look at it, okay? Um, it seemed like they didn't really care <laughs> on why that was true, so that's why I didn't go through that with you. All right, so I just thought that was kind of a waste of time. So you can go look at it if you would like to see why it's squared. I kind of give you a basic idea of why that's true. But there's your formula right there. All right, remember, this represents the length of a side, and this represents the length of its corresponding side. I could have said AD. I could have compared AD. What would I have to put over here, though, if I, if I put AD on top? E -H. E -H. How about EH? All right, AD is this one. EH is the one that's corresponding to it, right? So if I could have said this one to this one, because what are they going to do? They're going to put numbers in here. Do you see that? There's four numbers. There's the area for this rectangle or polygon. There's the area for this one. There's this side, and there's this side. What they're going to do is they're going to give you three of those four things, and you're just going to have to figure out what the fourth one is. That's all it is. All right, it's real simple. Now, here's a, here's a little trick. Not a trick, but it, it, this just makes your math a little bit easier. Whatever you're trying to solve for, I would always put that on top. All right? doesn't matter if you're trying to solve for this. I would put this one on top and then this one on the bottom. So you don't have to compare the one on the left to the one on the right. You could compare this one right here to this one right here. It doesn't make any difference. But what if I did that? What if I compared A2 to A1? What do you think you're going to do? You're going to switch the sides, right? I'm comparing the small one to the big one, so then I would compare the smaller side squared, right? Everybody see that? So what would this be? This would be what? EF squared over AB squared. Does that make any sense at all? So it all depends on which way that you're comparing them. If I'm comparing the left one to the right one, for the areas, I got to compare the left side to the right side as far as the sides are concerned. Brett, I'm up here. All right, let's do an example. This guy's got like the attention span of a flea, I tell you. Of a flea. I don't know if they have a. I don't even know if they. They probably don't have much of an attention span. That's why they just go from one place to the other. It never seems like they sit still. Do they even have brains? Uh, I'm sure they do. How could they do they anything the if they don't have brains? Okay. They're not. A, they're way bigger than like. I mean, there's things that are living that are microscopic. A flea. All right, Brett. You asked me a question. I was trying to answer it, but then you don't even pay attention to that. All right. So let's let's watch this stuff right here. Be really nice, Blake. I don't need that. Uh, let me find a good example. Here we go. Let's say that's eight and that's five. Let's say the area of this is thirty-two, and we want to find the area of this one. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that little formula that we are given. Hopefully you still have it on your paper, and we're going to solve for this. So what are we solving for? We can call that A1 if we want to. We can call that A2. It really doesn't make any difference. What are we trying to solve for? Come on, it's pretty obvious. A2. It's not A squared. It's A2. It's not a square. No, we don't. We don't square the area. Look back on your formula again. Okay, think before you talk, please. Watch. 
we're trying to solve for this one right here. All right, this is what we're trying to solve for. Remember what I said earlier, it's a lot easier if whatever we're trying to solve for, we put that one where? On the top. So let's put that one. Instead of comparing the left one to the right one, let's compare the right one to the left one. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to go backwards, right to left? Because I'm trying to solve for this A right here. So if I compare A to what? I'm comparing the areas to each other. A2 to what? To A1, which is 32. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm comparing from the right side to the left side. Now, what do I have to do to my sides? i got to compare the right side to the left side as well. But I don't just go 5 to 8, though. What do I do with the sides? Right, look at your formula. i got to square the side. All right, so I go 5 squared to what? To 8 squared. you got to remember that. Even in my, um, we had a test on that not too long ago in my uh, honors class. And there were several people, not a lot, but several people that normally know what they're doing. Good students usually get real good grades, but they forgot to square it. All right? You just have to remember the formula. Okay? You must remember that the side is squared, not the area. All right? The area is not squared. You take the sides and you square them. Everybody got that? Now, with that said, it's really simple now, really, really easy to solve for A2. We've done this math quite a bit before. How do you get... 82 by itself. Multiply it by 32. That's right. So you multiply that by 32. Plug that into your calculator and you've got your answer. So let's do that. So it's 5 squared. We know what that is. It's 25 times 32. Okay. And we take that and we divide it by 8 squared. You know what 8 squared is. What's that? 64. Okay. And then there you go. 12.5. So the area of that second polygon, that second rectangle, is what did I say it was? 12.5, okay, 12.5, all right, and that's what it is right there. So this area is 12.5, let's say it's in centimeters, so it would be what, centimeters squared, and that would be your area. It's as simple as that. It's a simple little formula. The math is simple. Okay, everything about this is actually pretty easy, okay, for a second. And that's all you do. Look, so again, what did I... What did I do? I needed to solve for A2, didn't I? So I know whatever I'm going to solve for, I want to put that on the top. So I put the A2 on the top. What do, what's my formula say to do? Compare the areas, right? So I compare this area to this area. A2 to 32. You don't even have to call it A2. You could have just called it A. It doesn't make any difference, okay? What do I do with the sides, though? i got to compare. Look, I went from the small to the large or the right to the left, however you want to think of it. How am I going to compare my sides? The same exact way, right? Yes. So the small side to the larger side. So it's 5 to 8, but what do I do with the sides according to my formula? I square the sides. You know, where did that come from? Well, it came from my formula. That's my formula right there. Okay? Just compare the areas to each other and then compare the squares of the sides of the area of the uh, polygon, okay? So that's a side to a side. You square it, square it. That's my formula. That's what this thing tells you to do. That's as easy as that. Now, it doesn't have to just be rectangles or quadrilaterals. Okay? It could be any shape. So uh, let's make up a shape that looks like the one in the book. Let's look at this. And let's shrink that one down a little bit. Actually, no. Let's put the smaller one over here on the left-hand side. Because the bigger one doesn't always have to be on the left. I just want to mix it up a little bit. All right, let's say that that one's 6. Let's say this one's 8. I think it's 8, yep. And... Um, the area of this one is 13.5. This is almost identical to what we just did. Okay, I'll give you like 30 seconds. Go. Solve for the area of this. Brett, I don't need the nonsense, okay? Oops, I forgot to uh, forgot to start recording. But there you go. That's how you do it. It's 24. You compare this area to this area. And then you compare the square of this side to the square of this side. Do your math, multiply by 
Throw it in the calculator. You get 24. And that's all there is to it. Let's do another one. It's a little bit, a little bit different. Same idea, just a little bit different. Um, I'll try to make it look. This is in the book, but it doesn't have to be a rectangle. All right, let's just do this. Let's um, scale it. Oh, let's not scale it. Let's do this. Transform. What do I want to do? Shear, that's what I want. And let's go about 30 degrees. There we go. This is in the book, but um, here we go. Let's call this one x. Let's call this one 10. The area of this one, area, is 150. It's meters, so it's square meters. And uh, the area of this one is 54 square meters. Okay? And you're trying to solve for x. Go ahead. Give it a shot. We're trying to solve for x right here, so we're going to put the x on the top, right? So we set up our proportion because that's our formula. In this case, I'm not going to put the area first. Since I'm solving for x, I'm going to put that first. But it is one of the sides, isn't it? So what do I have to do? I have to square that side. And then I compare it to what? The corresponding side to it, which is 10, and I square that. Now look, I'm comparing the right one to the left one. So I'm going to have to do the same thing with the area. So I have to compare this one to this one right here. Everybody see that? If I compare the right to the left, I have to compare the right to the left over here. And that's 150 over what? 54. I don't square those. You don't square the areas. You only square the lengths of the sides according to our formula. Everybody understand that? So now what, you, what do you do? There's actually two steps to solve this. You have to get rid of the 10 squared first. How do I get rid of this if it's being divided? Multiply. So I multiply by 10 squared. So I come over here, multiply that by 10 squared. Now we've done this plenty of times. x squared is equal to this. How do I get just x? How do I get rid of that squared? Square root it. That's right. So that gets rid of it, right? I could put a square root on this left side, but I, I know it's going to get rid of the 2, this little 2 right there, so I just get rid of it. So I've got it square root this side over here as well. So that's what I'm putting into my calculator. So let's see what I get. So 150 times 10 squared, which is 100, but I'll just put 10 squared. Divide that by 54. Hit that. Then I'm going to take the square root of that. So it's the square root of that big old number right there, 277.7 whatever. And that's going to be about that. So x is around what? 16.7? 16.7. And that's how you would do that. Yes? Oh, it should be, shouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's just because my picture wasn't drawn accurately. You're absolutely right. You know what? Because I copied it wrong from the book. Um, yeah, I didn't even notice that. Because I wasn't even, I, the pictures are just, are, are really not even all that needed. All right. It's just not drawn to scale, exactly. And remember, I make a big deal about this all year, right? Don't just look at your pictures to see if they're drawn to scale. I mean, it would be nice. I mean, normally they would have the bigger one having a bigger number, okay? So that does make a little bit more sense. So, um, so X would be 16.7, all right, and... 16.7 is bigger than the 10, right? This area is bigger than this, so that does definitely make sense. So so that side right there would be about 16.7. So that's how you do it. It's really not that hard at all, I don't think. Just got to know that formula. Remember, you take the area of one, compare it to the area of the other. And then you take one of the sides and you do what to it? Square it. And you compare it to the corresponding side on the other side, right? Make sure you, you only compare it to the other corresponding side. And I think in this worksheet that I'm going to give you, 
I think they always show you the sides that are corresponding to each other. It's not like you have to sit and think and figure out which side's corresponding to what. Uh, they usually tell you. All right. So look, they give you three of these four things. All you got to do is plug it in for whatever one you want to solve for. Right? Plug in all your numbers and solve whatever you need to solve for, and you'll be good to go. All right. Um, again, you don't have to always put what you're trying to solve for on the top. It just makes it a lot easier. Okay, trust me on that. Whatever you're trying to solve for, I would put that one on the top. So even though it's on the right-hand side, I still put it on top, put the other number on the bottom, do the other the two sides in the same exact order, right? And then it's a lot easier. All I got to do is just get rid of it from the bottom. If you didn't, look, you could have done it like this if you wanted to. You could have said, oh, let's compare 13.5 to A. And then if I compared this area to this area, I would have had to compare this side, 6, to this side, 8, and square those. But look, A's on the bottom. Do you really like A being on the bottom right here? I don't, because then what do you got to do? You got to cross multiply. You got to go 6 squared times A equals 13.5 times 8 squared, then divide by 6 squared. You see all that? It saves you a step just by putting the A on the top. All you got to do is one step. Multiply by 13.5. Still get the same thing, don't you? See that? 8 squared's on top, right there too. 13.5's on top, right there too. 6 squared's on the bottom, same there. So you still get the same exact thing. I just think it's a whole lot easier getting rid of that 13.5 just by multiplying. How can I do that? Make sure what you're trying to solve for is on the top. All right, enough of that. Um, okay, so I'm going to give you a worksheet, and the worksheet's going to be 11.5. It's front and back, front and back, so make sure you do them both. Um, we're going to take a quiz on this on Wednesday. Uh, not just on this, but a quiz um, on the whole entire chapter 11. All right? And there'll be uh, 10 questions. They'll be a little bit longer than some of the latest quizzes I've been given. 10 questions, and there'll be 20 points. All right? So that's going to be on Wednesday. We can take some review tomorrow, all right, and go over sections 11, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to take the quiz on Wednesday. As soon as we finish the quiz on Wednesday, that'll be the first thing we do on Wednesday. Uh, then we're going to start reviewing the uh, test, the the final exam. Final exam covers chapters six, seven, eight, and I think we skipped up to eleven. Right. So the final exam is going to just cover four chapters, and. It's going to be, there's 40 questions on the final exam. 40 questions, okay? On the final exam, it's like two tests, basically. And it's going to cover all four of these chapters right here. All right, so make sure, now listen, I don't hand out like a review sheet to review for the uh, final. I told you from the very beginning, from day one and several times throughout the year, many times throughout the year, hang on to your test. Right? And you're going to use your test as a review sheet. Your old tests are going to be a review sheet. So you should have already have chapter 6, 7, and 8 with you. Right? And of course, as soon as we finish 11, you'll have a quiz to look at to review for uh, chapter 11. So that's what you're going to do. So start bringing in these old tests. If you don't have them you know, with you right now, you left them at home somewhere or wherever it's in your locker, start bringing these with you. These are going to be your review sheets. I am not going to copy off you know brand new copies of these to hand off to hand out to you you're supposed to have them ready so you, you need to have them if you don't have it with you find a friend that's got an old test you maybe get it copied from them or whatever the case is all right yes yeah. um, what is the final, does it count at all for the, for the no it counts as 5% of your total grade your midterm counted 5% this counts 5% of your total grade <laughs> Um, not sure how they're going to do that. Okay, that's enough. Let me give you the worksheet and you can start working on it.